means that I don't have the presumption to say there's absolutely no God. I can't prove it. Right. But what I can say is I certainly want to, wouldn't want to live in a universe with one. The universe uh, is far okay. more exciting to me and more in, enlightening and more and more invigorating without a God. It's the, uh, the idea that people can somehow find spiritual solace in the idea that they are being controlled by some cosmic puppet maker versus the idea that, that we have this brief moment in the sun and, and our, mm-hmm. the meaning in our lives is one we create. And we, and, and we have this great ability to think about the universe. Let's, let's make the most of our brief moment in the sun. It's the central question of science, to try and understand why the universe is the way it is and make predictions about it. And to me, the fact that we've come so close to understanding the entire universe and its origins is just remarkable. I, I, I can't imagine why people wouldn't want to celebrate that and why they'd want to be afraid of that knowledge. Some people would rather that their children not know how the universe works. Mm-hmm. A for lot fear of people, it, actually. For, yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. for fear that it will affect their faith, then no, and what a, what a, what a disservice to, to children. And in fact, in that sense, I, I would have to say, I agree with, with Richard Dawkins, that in that sense, mm-hmm. much of religion is, is child abuse. Or I what? think science provides a spirituality. That's the problem. People say somehow science takes away spirituality and therefore it demeans our, our, our existence as humans. But it seems to me that what is more remarkably spiritual than, than thinking about the fact that we're here on a lonely planet at the edge of a galaxy with 100 billion stars that, that, you know, one of the most beautiful spiritual pictures I know of is a picture taken by the Cassini satellite on the other mm. side of Saturn where you can see a total eclipse of the sun. And then if you look carefully between Saturn's rings, you'll see a little pale blue dot, and that's the Earth. And the thought that we are there in this fragile planet mm-hmm. in the middle of a dark space to me, is, it just means that we, we really need to understand that we have to protect this planet, how fortunate we are to be mm-hmm. on it. You know, so, most astronauts I talk to are with you. They are. They what, come back, and they, they may have gone to space with deep faith, and they're so mind-boggled when they return. By the real universe, which is much more exciting than the universe of myth, myth and fabrication. The real universe is more exciting than science fiction, or myth. And that's all I want people to understand and, and celebrate that real universe. Well, and here's, here's an idea of why common sense should tell you that Islam, like many other religions, is not common sense. Because, of course, homosexuality is perfectly natural. In all, in all animal species, almost, it's natural. It occurs with a 10% frequency. Okay? In fact, there are good evolutionary reasons for homosexuality. So, in that sense, there's no reason and a fundamental. Why would a god who thought it was a sin? Make it natural among all species. I don't think the sheep, by the way, which 10% of sheep are long-term homosexual relationships. Okay? <laughs> Why would a god who thought it was a sin create sheep who aren't able to think about it be homosexual? That's the kind of nonsense that we have to ask. And the only way we can determine if it's nonsense is by looking at the world around us, not by deducing it, not by listening to the words of ignorant individuals and Iron Age, Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the sun. Wisdom and learning comes from observing the world around us. And we shouldn't take our wisdom from people who didn't even understand the way the world worked. My intent, and I'm sure I've offended people here, my intent was not to offend. I always offend, and I offend some of my scientific colleagues too. My intent was just to raise questions and encourage people to think about issues. And for that, I hope, I've, I hope to, that some of the statements I've made will cause people to think. And, you're, and indeed, my whole point is that given access to information, and I believe you should get access to information about the world really works, which is why I write scientific books and I speak, because I think these are some of those beautiful ideas people have ever come up with, that we shouldn't be afraid of them. We shouldn't fear them. We shouldn't view them as if, in fact, if they offend our beliefs, that's a good thing because it means our beliefs are wrong. And that, as I say to students all the time, is the greatest gift we can have. Changing our minds and learning is what's produced the progress that allows this room to happen, that allows these video cameras to be recording things. So I just hope that as I hope I am willing to change my beliefs or change my mind in the presence of evidence and get information that I hope that some of the things I've said has spurred your thinking and I certainly don't want to convert you into anything. And so thank you for listening. I think it's really important to get those YouTubes out in Arabic and and, uh, and, and I think The Unbelievers has actually been subtitled in Arabic, which I'm very happy about. Mm -hmm. But um, the opposite, um, I was very honored to be asked... um, um, uh, it relates to something Miriam was talking about earlier. Uh, Raif Badawi, who many of you know of, 
um, who's, who was arrested and, and, and subjected to lashing and 10 years imprisonment for blogging. Um, they've just, uh, his, his work was in Arabic, and there is now going to be a translation um, of his, uh, put into a book, and they asked me to write the foreword, which I just did, for his book, which is going to come out. And I think it's really important that we work the other way around, that the important people in, in those countries, as Miriam was saying, the people who are fighting for free thought, that they not be silenced. And so I was really proud and pleased to write the foreword, and I hope it becomes very popular, because we really need to give them a voice. And, uh, and we should all do what we can to make sure those people are not silenced, because they are the future, in my opinion, of those countries. So. If you went in a time machine, yes. this is something that I remember from H.G. Wells, you remember the time sure. machine? Sure. No one realizes that, hey, it's time and space. So the Earth, we, we feel like we're at rest, but the Earth is going around, around the sun at 30 kilometers per second. Okay? If you went back in your time machine a minute earlier, so you, you, you went back in time a minute, but stayed at the same point in space, the Earth would have moved 1,800 kilometers away, and you'd be sitting out in space without any air or any, anything else. So, so every time they talk about a time machine, I always think of them going back in time and suddenly popping out and discovering Yes, you yeah. you're not going to land in the same spot, You're not going to land in the same spot because the Earth is moving around. Right. One of the catch-22s of relativity is because we have mass, it takes an infinite amount of energy to get to the speed of light. So we'll never get, we'll get there. We'll be able to, I mean, in principle, we could travel closer and closer to the speed of light. And it is true. It's not science fiction. If you were going around in a spacecraft traveling at, you know, 99.999% of the speed of light, you could go on a trip that for you would take two weeks, but you'd come back to Earth and 50,000 years would have elapsed. That's true. true and yes. as I say, we test that all the time. We have, in fact, one of the simplest tests of that it's the amazing fact that if you had a Geiger counter, if we had a Geiger counter here, I should have brought one of them in, it would be clicking. And one of the particles that it would be clicking from are particles called muons. They're created when cosmic rays hit the upper atmosphere and they produce these particles called muons. Well, a muon at rest lives one millionth of a second. And you could show it created in the upper atmosphere, even traveling at the speed it is, it wouldn't make it down to the Earth. But the reason it makes it down to the Earth is that its clock is ticking slowly. And it says, oh, it's a millionth of a second now, time for me to decay. But in our rest frame, because it's moving with respect to us, it may, it's, it's, it's much more than a millionth of a second, so it makes it to Earth. So the very fact that we can measure these cosmic ray particles on Earth, many of them, is due to the fact that their clocks are ticking slowly. It's not subjective. That's what I want to point out. It's not as if we perceive time to be traveling slowly. It really is. It really travels at different rates for different observers. If, of course I have faith that... The, but science works, but my faith is vindicated by experiment. If science stops working, then I'll stop having faith. I mean, the great thing about science is your faith is shakable. I may have faith that some idea I've come up with is correct, but the minute it's proved wrong by observation, I throw it out by, like yesterday's newspaper. And Cardinal Dolan said, it is your shortcoming that there is no room for faith in your life because that, makes, that will inevitably make your life less and then name your adjectives, less rich, less interesting, yeah, well, less, etc., etc. Et you know, I find palm cardinals tend to be pompous um, and usually wrong and from my experience. I think it's, you know, look, faith for some people provides, enriches their lives, provides them solace and comfort. But to argue that if, you, if you're willing to accept the universe for what it is, that somehow that diminishes you, it's just, it's really pompous nonsense, I think. I get great spiritual fulfillment out of the universe. Because of the spiritual, yeah. If you want, I get awe and wonder and amazement, and I'm uplifted. I I, I feel one with the cosmos by looking at a Hubble Space Telescope picture. And as I often said, that kind of spirituality is better than the spirituality of religion because it's true. It's interesting, though, that you can use the word spiritual and you know physics, cosmology, whatever, in the same sentence. I I really get upset when people well, say your science would takes. Say it's a, Yes, people Doesn't say matter. that, and, that's, yeah. and they say science demeans our existence, but it doesn't. You know, f again, to turn to Feynman, he said, you know, that knowing how a rainbow works doesn't make it any wonder less wonderful, it makes it more wonderful. Hmm. You know, rainbow's a beautiful thing, but learning about the physics behind it makes it more beautiful. Science makes the world a more fascinating place, one that is more amazing, and one more worth living in. And so I am offended when people say that science somehow takes out the spirituality of the existence. It enhances 
that existence in a way which, as I say, is much more interesting than, than the books written by Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the sun. We are connected to the universe, but not in such an abstract sense. We're connected to the universe by our atoms. Uh, every atom in our body was once inside an exploding star. We talked about exploding stars before. Every atom in our body was inside a star that exploded. The le atoms in your left hand might have been inside a different a star than your right hand because the elements that make you up, the carbon, the nitrogen, and the oxygen, they weren't made in the Big Bang. The only elements that were made in the Big Bang were hydrogen, helium, and a little bit of lithium, and I'm assuming lithium isn't important to you, but carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen are, and the only places those are made are in the cores of stars. So we are literally stardust. We are stars, and they are us. And that, of course, speaks to what that quote was about, but in a real, definite way. That's what I mean by the fact that the science adds to that vague, those vague philosophical meanderings. It tells us things that are worth sitting back and reflecting about. Would it be important to you to be able to prove God does not exist? No, I mean, first of all, I know it's unprovable because God is a concept that's not falsifiable. That's a slippery concept that you keep, you know, a lot of people call it God of the gaps. They keep putting God where, you know, it used to be, used to be in the origin of species. Well, it got rid of there. You, got, you know, they keep putting God in the places where we haven't learned about yet. Now the real the details. But the problem with that God of the gaps argument is when we fill the gaps, where does God go? So for me, you know, God has become so irrelevant that I don't care. I mean, God is never discussed in, science, in physics meetings because we understand how the universe works. And we, uh, uh, at many levels, there's many levels we don't understand. But the fact that we can look back to the earliest moments of the Big Bang and begin to understand that and the, to the far future and to the far depths of the universe without needing any, any, any supernatural being means that God is irrelevant. As the physicist Steven Weinberg, who also I, I know doesn't happen to believe in God, has said, you know, most physicists don't think about God enough to know if they even believe in them. Because God's irrelevant. And as I tried to show in my book, God is irrelevant. And so it's not important to me to prove that God doesn't exist. It's important to me to celebrate the universe we actually live in. And if there's a God, I don't care. The beauty of the universe is what's worth celebrating and getting people to realize that they need to accept the universe for what it is, rather than imposing their own wishes and desires upon the universe. Because when you do that, you make bad decisions. And I think that's the real problem for me in some religious views, is that you impose your desires and hopes upon the universe, and then you end up with nonsense. You end up saying homosexuality is bad, when in fact there's every bit of evidence that homosexuality is perfectly normal and, and natural in, in many species, not just in humans. And so when you impose your morality based on, again, a morality of ancient Iron Age people who really didn't know anything about the universe, you're limiting yourself and you're limiting your actions and your policies. And that's, and that's one of the reasons why I want policies to be based on empirical evidence. Well, the, no, to me, the biggest mystery is how did the universe <laughs> come into being? And, and, and some people like to answer that by saying, by, it's a cop-out. God is a cop-out. So we don't know it's God. For I think for most people, they say, I can't comprehend this. There must be something I don't understand, and I'm going to pose an intelligence on it. And, the, and, and, and that may be true. But, you do, but it's not required. There are things we don't understand. There may be things we'll never comprehend. But that doesn't mean there's an intelligence behind it. There were lots of things, as you pointed out, uh, the, the, 100 years ago, there were lots of things we didn't comprehend and we thought might never be comprehended. And it's amazing that some of them we comprehend now. It makes the journey worth carrying on. I mean, look, again, un religion has not been universally bad. For many people, it, it causes them to have charity and empathy, and, 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 or at least they believe it causes them to have those things. But religion has, on the whole, been responsible for more violence and hatred throughout human history than almost anything else. It's, you know, you don't fly, I hate to say this because it's a hackneyed example, you don't fly planes into a building because you want to understand the universe. And, and you, you do it because you believe in your divinely right. Uh, and, and it's such an absurd belief that uh, it causes you to do irrational things. And so I think, unfortunately, organized religion, on the whole, has been bad. And the, universe would be, and the world would be better without it.